Hello, how's it going? Got another deadly sin to sculpt today. Today I'm going to work on sloth. So let's get rolling. This is what I have so far. I'm just going to put him over to the side here. There we are. And yeah, so let's think about like what sloth means. Um, I had to really think about why this would be different than gluttony. Gluttony, obviously, wanting to eat all the time, fat, lazy, kind of stereotypes. Um, but with sloth, I wanted to think more in like almost like an apathetic, like depression route. So uh, that's what I did. He looks very sad and very spooky. Uh, his face is supposed to be a mask. As of right now, you can't super tell. Um, but we'll work on that, yeah? All right. I do have a Pinterest board of some references that I have pulled together. Let me show it to you. Highly recommend Pinterest. Uh, I used ArtStation for a while, but then a lot of artists I liked left because of drama. Nah, it's not drama. It's all the AI nonsense. Um, which I don't blame them for being upset. I would be too. All right. Where is my board? There it is. Here we go. So this is kind of what I... I just clicked on any images that felt like sloth to me. Uh, a lot of tentacles. This one's much more gluttony-like, but I still liked it because the giant chest like weighing down on them was interesting. Uh, this cat I thought was perfect. Obviously, I can't just sculpt a cute cat uh, for this sin. Would not match the rest of them. But... Uh, that's kind of the direction that I'm going. As of now, it's most heavily following this one, but I do want to branch out a little bit as I refine this design. All right. Well, let's get rolling. Okay. Today I have my comfy red robe and a fresh coffee. Uh, it's been really cold here. <laughs> I live in California, and uh, the gas prices have been really, really high. Like, quadruple the normal price. I'm not kidding. So if your bill was normally around $80, you're looking at, like, $380. It's just a nightmare. So I've just been spiteful and kept the house at 60 degrees. And I, I'm over it, man. I kept it at 65 now because I'm like, I'm just freaking cold. <laughs> Ricky and I kept it 60 for about a few months. And then the other day I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm cold. I'm tired of it. Uh, but nah, it's, it's not dangerously cold. It's just uncomfortable. Things have been really good, actually. And nothing official, but I figure I should mention we might be moving to Tennessee. It's a long story. But there's some, and that's, we're not moving because of gas prices. <laughs> but I'll update you guys on that if it actually happens or not. I mean, I'll have to because if I'm moving across the country 2,000 miles, I will be making less stuff and it'll be kind of obvious. All right. I do like all the main elements here. I'm just kind of thinking of what else I should be adding to this. Um, let me look at my references a little bit more. Like what would push this design further. I kind of have some go-tos that I like, like uh, when in doubt, just duplicate and add more things. So more heads, more arms, more hands, that kind of thing. I already gave Gluttony a second pair of arms, which worked really well for him. I'm not totally sure what else would benefit this model. Um, whenever I'm kind of stuck like this, I usually pose. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and hide the chains. And then I'm going to double check to make sure I don't have any part of these uh, sub tools hidden. Because if you do, we use Trampose Master and you come back, it makes a gigantic mess. And it makes me very sad every time. Because it just like destroys your mesh. And there's really no way to fix it other than just doing it again. Alright, we're all good. And then I'm not going to use a rig of any sort because he kind of has um, unusual posture. So I don't have a rig that would fit this. It looks like it inverted. Um, this has been flipped inside out. Can I just fix that right now? So it's, it, the normals are flipped. I don't know why I did that. It's not a huge issue, but I have to fix it. Um, oh man, where, where is that? 
this doesn't happen very often when it does I always forget where it is I think it's under the same place where you can um, I can just click double for right now which just shows uh, both sides of a face get become visible all right, so flipping the normals, we're just gonna call that good for right now. There is a flip button in one of these menus. I just haven't used it in a while. Okay. First thing I wanna do is turn off perspective. Um, I've noticed that my perspective turned off. It makes me exaggerate my poses more, which is great. And I think I can actually start with hiding this cloak and staggering his legs a little bit more. So let's grab mask lasso. And I'll just select one of his legs. I always blur the selection because it makes it easier to get a nice smooth bend. I have a really strong <laughs> bend right now, making that thigh totally parallel with the ground. The other leg probably won't be as intense. And it's okay if this is gonna look a little broken and a little weird. I kind of want it to add to this model. Obviously, you don't want to make it so broken that's not possible. I could put some work in to make it seem like this other leg is almost like dragging behind him. However, a lot of that's going to be covered up by the cloak. So I don't want to put in too much extra work for something that you're not going to be able to see. And I really recommend this too. If you're kind of stuck with your design, you're not really sure what's gonna, what the next step is, I really recommend just moving to the next stage of creation, which in this case for me is posing. And if you decide that it wasn't helpful, just save a copy of your original. That is such a weird way of walking, man. Look at that. That is so creepy. Ugh. Alright, so. We don't move like a train, <laughs> we stagger. So if my left leg is forward, my right arm is forward. <laughs> there we go. I like the idea of this arm kind of reaching forward and then the other one, I'll make his hands, like his fingers really long and uh, maybe have his arm like dragging behind him. I'm really glad that I'm posing this. I think it's gonna accelerate this process a little bit because I just feel like kind of stuck with it. Not, not that I didn't like it. I did like it. just didn't know what was next. Because I don't want to just add elements for the sake of adding elements. I want them to complement the design. Um, there's definitely pieces I've worked on in the past where I'm like, yes, it's cool that they have all these different aspects of the design, but it ends up making the overall design weaker All right, I'm gonna pull this arm out of its socket almost. I'm saying that out loud, so it's very intentional. I'm also going to bend his elbow kind of the wrong way, but I don't want this arm to be too out of view from the front. So whenever I make models, I always make sure that there's like an alpha shot, if that makes sense, like an angle that best surmises the model, which is gonna be, it's gonna be this one. So eventually I'm gonna have the head tilted to face the camera right here as well. All right. This arm is looking so goofed up anatomy wise, but it it's good. <laughs> awful, awful, gross. He's almost looking kind of uh, melted. I might make this the new alpha shot maybe because I, I just want the arm to be really visible so let's put his cloak and stuff back on it's a little too long now because I've shortened his legs by bending them which is great because it draws even more attention to that hunchback whenever you're trying to smooth the edge of something that only has like a sink like a no thickness um, it won't smooth unless you have your minimum connected points for your smooth brush turned to one. 
You can find that under the brush palette. Uh, brush, smooth brush modifiers, min connected points. There you go. The way that I'm kind of moving this cloak around really easily with the move brush is a combination of just normal click and dragging, but also holding down alt and pulling. And that will pull the move towards you instead of moving the fabric away from you. So alt plus the move brush. I use that a lot. And that I won't fuss with this too much because I'm probably just going to re-simulate it to fall on his shoulders again. And then... I'm going to center my gizmo and rotate it, turn on perspective, and kind of see how this is coming along. Right now I'm finding that alpha shot I mentioned earlier. I think it's going to be this other side actually, and then I'll turn the head to match the camera. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to select his little cowl because that will move with his head and neck. I'm going to hide the other Owl cloak. And uh, let's start turning this. There we go. And then I want his whole head to be tilted because he is a creepy boy. Selecting his mask and his head. Oh god, this thing is really scary. Make sure that whenever you're rotating something, it's actually at the pivot point. So I'm going to like the base of his neck. I'm not trying to rotate it from the front of his face. Otherwise it kind of rotates weird. He's just a sad guy. Gross. All right. Now let's rotate it to get that alpha shot I'm talking about. I kind of turned him a little too much by accident. So now he's not looking at the camera, but I, I kind of like it. Because he's not supposed to look like imposing or terrifying necessarily just sloth like i think i want this other arm to be dragging on the ground as well because it just doesn't somehow this pose despite how creepy and elongated it is is still showing too much effort all right let's turn off perspective so i can see what's flat again put that arm straight down, hanging, and then maybe I'll bend these fingers really roughly. I'm surprised how well that worked. I'm going to kind of nudge this over. Though really creepy and with a giant cloak, his silhouette does read pretty clearly still. Alright, I'm happy with that. We'll go to T-Pose Sub-T. I like to do my posing in two passes, so once I get it like 80% of the way there, I just, uh, I move on. Sometimes I decide it doesn't need a final pass, or if it's just not worth the effort. Okay. We know this had some issues. Also, I feel like this is so dark. I always complain about that. I'm like, I can't see. Okay. A little brighter. Sometimes I like picking a matte cap instead. No, that is harder to see. What is gonna, ooh, that is much darker. That's not helping at all. Eh. We're fine with this. Maybe the ambient inclusion being a little more intense would make it easier to see too. Okay. Alrighty, let's, I'm happy with this. I might wanna simulate it some more. Let's see how that, oops, I moved my entire window. Let's see how that looks. So dynamics is really funny. If you have any um, thickness, like real thickness, not dynamic subdiv, it comes out really poorly. Um, so that's another reason why I like to work without any. All right, gravity is set to 10 by default, which is like way too strong. I set it to like three, usually not 13, three, there we go. Uh, I turn inflate to zero as well. Make sure you have collision volumes turned on, otherwise nothing will happen. And then we can run the simulation. It went right through the model, which I don't want that. I also rarely run the simulation in the dynamics menu. I usually grab um, the transpose cloth. So it's a 3D gizmo, it's exactly the same. But now when I move this, it will simulate, which is pretty cool. I feel like it's not doing that. 
Let me adjust some settings. Let's increase the firmness. Make sure self collision is also turned on. It is not. Now it is. And I don't have any of my modifiers like inflate or expand turned on. That would also help. I like scrunching it a bit more. Moving it down. He's just, he just looks so sad. <laughs> like I said, I want to give him a hug, but I, I, I would not if I saw this. He looks horrifying. All right, I'm gonna turn on transparency to see how this is fitting to his head because it doesn't need to be perfect, but it's a little, it's a little too far off. Hey, Xander. Like always, I'm talking about adding thickness to my models. <laughs> and thank you. I like how this is coming out too. This is going to be sloth, which he just looks like depression and apathy, which is the point. That is that is what I was thinking of. I want to make sure that it looks like these fabrics are being pulled down as much as possible. I just want him to look extremely weighed down. All right, I also would like to re-simulate this cloth a little bit more. I don't even know what it's hanging up on right here. Oh, you know what? It's probably that chain, isn't it? Which I should put back on him at some point. I'm going to recalculate this. Because it's picking up on like an imaginary volume right there. There we go also going to recenter it and we're gonna like squish it onto the model see how that works and now pull straight down you'll notice that I'm moving really slow with the uh, transpose 3d gizmo and that's intentional the faster that you move your gizmo and stuff the more it uh, the faster it simulates and does it doesn't do as good of a job sometimes I like to really make sure I give it time Oh, he's not talking about the one that you're wearing. Ha, yeah, I am I am comfy today. <laughs> Earlier in the stream, I was complaining about how cold it's been here. Um, which I know it hasn't really been that cold. Like, the high for the day is still, like, in the mid-50s, which isn't bad. But since gas has been so expensive, I haven't kept my house warmer than 60 as of until yesterday. I caved. And now it's 65 because it's too cold. <laughs> Sloth is looking very sad, very creepy, pretty happy with it. And yeah, I gave him like this onesie pretty much. <laughs> um, I was going to give him like distinct pieces, looking like a shirt and pants, but then I realized you can't see most of it. So I might as well just put him in a onesie, yeah? Also, that seems pretty sloth-like to me. I'd give him like PJs almost. All right, I think this part of the cloak is a... Uh, Making it kind of hard to see the rest of the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn dynamic off and then I'm going to see if I can just smooth this section out and out of the way. It'll make the cloth asymmetrical, but that's fine. Who doesn't like some asymmetry? And that we can see a bit more of his pose and his PJs. <laughs> Making sure the cloth is still hanging straight down to give that sense of like weight. I really like how the cloth back here simulated. I don't want it to be too long though, because I do want this to fit on a base still. So we'll kind of scrunch that as much as possible later. Maybe I should move this a little farther back too. I do want more fabric fold simulated right here, and I bet you that will work if I mask it. I don't actually know. We're going to find out. It's not really simulating the way I want it to. Let's try it again. Haha! -ha. Folds. Could I just sculpt them? Yes. But, you know, once you've done something enough times, <laughs> sometimes it's fun just to figure out how to do the same thing in a different way. I also do think the simulated folds look 
somewhat better than the ones that I do. I think it looks best when I simulate like the base of the fold and then I detail on top of that based on what it's given me. I think the average person sees it and I'm like, yeah, they're folds. They look good either way. I'm like, no, it's got to it's the subtleties. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing with this section. I'm really happy this works with masking. All right, I didn't do a very good mask, so we're going to try again. When I went to blur it out, it pretty much just erased the entire mask, which is not, which is not helpful. All right, this spot isn't simulating as much as I wanted to, which is fine. I can just uh, sculpt that later. All right, let's make sure his PJs fit. <laughs> I'll probably add some holes to them later. And I definitely want to fray the edges of this uh, cape, but I won't do that until I commit to the general form that it is, and then I actually add real thickness to it, not just imaginary, to simulate the fabric. All right, let's put the chains back around his neck. Oops, see brush is hesitating. Do not crash. Oh, it's because I have the fabric simulator on. It's trying to simulate this like fabric. Oops, let's pick the real gizmo again. That's the only problem with using the fabric gizmo is I always forget to change it. Back to normal. All right. It's a small detail, but I like the chains. Maybe I should put them around his little cowl. That way you can actually see them. Oh, I forgot to record a speed skull for this. There. <laughs> We're doing it as of right now. I record speed skulls for almost everything that I make, and I just hoard them. I don't... I keep thinking I'm going to use them for students, and I don't. <laughs> The only problem is I do the chains on the outside, then I have to... Where did they go? I have to, like, make the fabric fit, you know? That's gonna mess with my flow. Just kidding. We're not doing that. Back under the cowl. Mm, now what? Thickness drinking game should be a thing. You know, and I, I wasn't so self-aware of saying it all the time until I started live streaming. And I'm like, I mean, it's like the same thing like every time I say the word sculpt, you know, or move brush. But I get what you're saying. What if I give him long yellow nails? Something gross. He just like, he needs something else. What about spikes on his back? I really like the way this model is going. I don't want to overcomplicate it either. But, um, just a little boring. <laughs> he needs some pizzazz. So what about a spike? And it's yellowish because that matches my color scheme. We're going to inflate it a little bit so it's actually printable. And uh, we're going to duplicate that one, just keep it. But then this one, I'm going to actually curve. If I should curve it upward, just for the sake of 3D printing, it makes it so much easier. And let's just stick some of these on his back, yeah? So I've played a lot of Dragon Age, and at some point you go into the Fade, which is like not a real realm, it's like where spirits are and stuff, and they actually do have the demons there, and the personification of Sloth was a bear, and he had all these giant spikes on him, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about with this. <laughs> Sandra said, as a thoughtful person, I tell you what needs to, but too lazy to type it out. Perfect. And that's okay. I, I talk as if I'm wanting feedback, and then people give me feedback, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to give it. I just probably won't take it. Unless it's super good, of which you have had very good ideas in the past. Yep, it's going to be spikes. I'm feeling it. This is going to be cool. And... For me, it's a Dragon Age reference, even though it's very small and it brings me joy. 
It looks like Dragon Age Wolf will actually be a game that comes out one day. I guess. I'll delete it when I see it. Like, I know they're working on it. They mentioned the alpha's done too, but like... It's just been so many years. I can't tell you how many times I've replayed Dragon Age Inquisition. Like, I really, I really can't tell you. Because if we're counting complete playthroughs, I mean, maybe like, for sure under 10. But as far as like, just starting the game and playing like, 30% of it, many, 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 many times. I am so glad these spikes are working out the way I wanted them to. This is the vibe I wanted. I should probably cover them in like some moss too, because you know, he's so slow moving that he has plants growing on him. That's a thing with actual sloths too. They'll have moss and other greenery growing on them, which is cute because it makes me think of them like, uh, I don't know, like little woodland creatures. I don't know. Makes him very, even more endearing. Why is this rotating so far away? That's why. I like these main spikes, but I think I'm going to create another different kind. Just the contrast. Ricky will be happy that I chose to make the spikes point up. So he doesn't have to pre-support every one of these. Alright, I like that. We're going to keep it. And then I'm also going to add those nails I talked about. So long nails and long toenails. I don't know if he has any fingernails left. Yes, he does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this model, delete subdiv, and we're going to take all the nails and toes. And not the eyeballs and teeth. We don't need those. There we go. Great. I'm going to make these yellow. Okay, it's his, it's, his, it's his entire toe. We'll work with it. He does look like human sloth. Thank you. <laughs> that is the goal. Alright, how come it's his entire toe? Like, I don't, I don't want the entire toe. I just want the nail. There we go. We're going to delete his little toes. Delete, yes. There we go. All right, now let's make them long and gross. I'm just gonna grab my move brush. I'm going to divide a few times. Just once is probably enough. I'm at 33,000 points. And we're just gonna drag these straight up. Normally I would have the rest of the model visible because I'd be concerned about making sure these toenails fit. But um, in this case, if they kind of don't fit, that adds more to it. Make it kind of, you know, gross and uneven. Okay, I need to make sure they're still attached to the model, though. <laughs> Get over there. There we go. Now he has long toenails. Since his fingers are bent, I do need to keep the model visible so I can see. There we go. Long nails is really helping. I don't know why this nail's already all bent and weird. Probably when I was uh, masking and moving it, it didn't grab it all the way. It's good enough. So this is one thing I love about making monsters, is like, you can kind of just be messy and loose with it. You don't have to be so perfect with it. If you're making something beautiful, a lot of these fine details really do matter. Okay. This shoulder piece right here is a nice flat piece 
I'd really like to add a nice texture to almost like a fray cloth where it's all like threads and it like overlaps. I've never done that texture before. I don't know how to do it, but I've seen other artists do it and it's very cool. So I would like to. Hey, someone's new here. Hey, so Corey D Gaming. Hello and welcome. Um, let's see. What else I want to do that? I'm going to sip my coffee as I think about adding that texture to it. I think the fastest way to be some sort of surface noise, I can mask off what I need. I probably should change the title of this live stream to Sculpting Sloth Deadly Sin. I just have a generic 7 Deadly Sins because I didn't know what I was going to work on until I started the live stream. I'm really happy with this though, because again, this live stream started with what we have on the left. I just wasn't really sure what the direction this is going to go. I think I can add even more chains. So like a ball and chain motif would be really, I think, uh, clear and powerful for embodying a sloth. I, I could do a literal ball, but at the very least, I think I'm going to add chains around his feet um, and maybe a few around his wrists as well. That would be a good next step. And as far as that fancy cloth texture, I still think I want to do that. Um, I just need to do a little bit of research and grab some references on what like threadbare cloth looks like. Okay, let's do that. We're gonna add some chain. I have this really nice uh, pre-made chain brush, which is from Bad King. Uh, Badking.com, I think it's like .au.com, but just Google Bad King and you'll find it. They have a bunch of really amazing free resources for artists to use. So I've got a load brush, go into my giant folder of brushes, and there's the chain brush. I'm gonna duplicate the body and delete subdivision levels again, just because um, you can't apply curved brushes to some of the subdiv levels. I guess I don't need to hide all of those clothes to do this. <laughs> Makes it really disturbing. If you drag out a curved brush and hold shift, it should wrap around the model. And it, it generally does, but if it's too small, it doesn't work. You know what? A spike chain might be really cool for this. Of holding shift. It just doesn't want to do it. Come on, ZBrush. Help me out. <laughs> My uh, brush size might be too big. Yeah, that was the issue. That's too small. <laughs> We're going to have to get creative with this. I also have symmetry turned on. That would explain why the brush is not behaving the way I wanted it to. The more you know. Now it's probably going to work no problem. Sake. Okay, you're working exceptionally poorly. I use this technique all the time. Again, you click, you drag, you hold shift, and it's there we go. I guess if I narrate as I do it, it works slightly better. Okay, I don't like how this is working, so let's find a new solution. I will grab a sphere. I will make it a little bit more cylinder shape, and I will just get a preset chain size around this. Oh, of course, look, it's working perfectly now. There we go. I'll inflate it a little bit. Increase the size. Inflate even more. Um, to make the chain links easily 3D printable, I want to make sure that they're really oversized. I'll delete that base piece and then make sure I actually complete the mesh. And there you go. We now have a pre-made little chain link since it does not want to wrap around the body nicely for me. I'll duplicate this, hide the original, and we'll go put it on the model. There we go. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, I might not I might like having some of the changes like hanging. We'll see. 
I'm also gonna put this around his ankles first. Mainly because that shape just fits better right now. I think I need to make this uh, pre-made chain piece even larger to fit it around his wrists. It's actually not fitting like I wanted it to. No, not working. Just kidding. Going back to the original strategy again, because I just it's just not fitting the way that I want it to. We're gonna do it the manual way. Or I'm just gonna quit on this chain right now and come back to it later because it's bothering me. Here we go. Ha! We got it. <laughs> Moving his, like, pajamas around to fit. Now we'll add a couple layers of these chains. Not like that. Oh, that's right, it doesn't have a closed link on it because that's how the brush operates by default. No worry. Yeah, we can duplicate this a few times. And because the chain's being fussy and not working exactly how I want it to, I'm just going to throw it on there and move on because I'm already over it. <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons why I don't sculpt by like with uh, physical materials very often. I like doing stuff digitally because I feel like a lot of sculpting by hand is more about like fighting the materials that you're using. <laughs> than just getting what you have in your head. Very nice. see if I can just duplicate these and put them on his on the wrist conveniently. I think it's a pretty similar size. Yeah, excellent. Kind of slant them because you know, gravity. We're going to leave that there for right now because I don't want to mess with them too much right now. And we'll put some on the other wrist as well. There we go. It's a pretty large improvement from where we started. So now I'm looking at these spikes and thinking about how I want to detail them. Normally I would just go through with this alpha, which I use all the time, 
Um, I think in this case, I want something a little bit more intricate. Since he's not super detailed, it'd be nice if these spikes had an interesting and more like ornate pattern on them. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is actually UV unwrap these. Um, here we go. See how those came out. Okay, good enough. I'm just making sure there are seams down them, so that way I can kind of control how this texture goes on a little bit better. Give them that yellow color back again, and now let's try some surface noise. All right, so it looks a little funny right now, so let's go ahead and adjust these to look just how we want them to. There we go. So yeah, if I click on 3D, it's just going based on the actual map. If I click on UV, it'll follow the scenes I set for it. This specific texture I gave it actually didn't need to have it at UV unwrapped, so I'm gonna go back to 3D, because you can see right here, there's kind of like this, uh, they break, because this is where that seam is from the UV map. So I'll go back to 3D, because it actually ended up looking better this time. And, uh, let's get this looking cool, shall we? Add a little bit of noise. I can change the angle if I'd like. I kind of like just how it looks right now, but let's see if scale gets something interesting. Ooh, if we kind of compress the Y, it gets a little more squiggly. I do like that. All right. I love it. Creepy. Now before I apply it, um, I think that these spikes on his back do need a little bit more of an interesting texture. And by texture I mean like base shape. So what I'm going to do is, is I think I'm going to go through with the inflate brush and maybe taper the bottom a little bit more. And to make sure I don't affect every single spike that I'm looking at, I will go to auto groups and then mask by polygroups to 100. Excuse me. What I'll do is now that when I sculpt on something, it's only going to affect that specific poly group, and it's not going to affect everything around it. There we go. So I'm going to taper these a little bit more so it looks like they're coming out of his back as opposed to just stuck to his back. I'm also not set on how I want to make this uh, cloak interact with those. I might actually manually put holes in each spot of the cloak. I think that would take forever, but I think it might look really good too. I don't want to do that right now, so we're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to one step at a time. All right. And then one more thing I want to try is subdividing these and then going to chisel creature and going to this neck piece. Make sure back face mask is turned on. Otherwise it will distort the other side as well. All right. And kind of just like this little pattern. Adding uh, spikes on the spikes. Yeah. All right, so I'm just testing it out right there really quick, and now I want to see how the surface noise lays on top of that. Yeah, I think that's the way. It's not distracting from the design. It's not, it's not too much. So let me erase these really quick, and then kind of go through with a little bit more thoughtful of a plan. I think, obviously, I want the larger spikes to be at the base and to get smaller as it tapers up. But I'm also thinking, like, how randomized I want these to look. I think the more randomized they look, the better it's going to look. And by randomized, I mean, like, spinning around the spike as opposed to, like, perfectly layering. There we are. And if anyone watching has any questions on what I am sculpting, why I am sculpting this, who am I? Whatever, feel free to ask. It's funny because in real life, I hate repeating myself, but I don't know. I guess with internet strangers, I don't mind re-explaining who I am a thousand times because you don't know me. <laughs> I'm so happy with how this model is coming out. 
I knew it all come together, but I just, I couldn't see it in my head. A fair amount of my work, even, way before it's done, I get really excited about it because I can see it finished, even if it's not. Um, and this wasn't one of them. I was just like, well, it's going to look cool at some point. Is that point right now? I don't know. All right, let's put that noise on there. I think I want to change it to where it's not so like vertical. And it's more ho uh, horizontal with the spikes. So I am going to rotate it. I don't really know how to do that. We're going to figure it out. I think it's Z. Aha, it was Z. That wasn't hard at all. Okay. <laughs> we have figured it out. I don't think I want it as liney, so I'm going to increase the plug-in scale as well. How cool is that? Ooh, I don't like that as much. Just kidding. So indecisive. Maybe not indecisive. Just like, picky. I'm really good at a Maybe not knowing what I want, but I know what I don't want. And when I see it, I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> I've always joked about a large part of me improving as an artist has been like a game of spot the difference almost, which is looking at works that I really enjoy and then looking at my own work and being like, what is different? And that was a huge part of my growth, honestly, just that alone. Yeah, that's cool. Gross. Spooky sad man. I think his mask needs a little bit more work. Because it doesn't really look like a mask right now. It just looks like a distorted face. But this is his actual face under there. He's kind of handsome. Minus, you know, the lack of ears and everything else. Anyway. I have some creases on this. So that when I do subdivide it, it does add some structure to it. What makes a mask a mask? Let's see. There's no eyebrows or eyelashes. Um, usually the features are more simplified and there's harsher lines. Is that it? I mean, I guess you can do whatever you want. I think I'm going to define his nose a little bit more. Whoops. Also probably use a Z-Mauler brush to crease the sides of his nose. And then maybe make the... Um, his eyelids a little bit thicker, so they're more visible. And like always, thank you guys for hanging out. I find this a lot of fun. I've been more on myself about live streaming because like there's just no reason not to. I don't dislike it. It doesn't take any more energy for me and I get to hang out. Most importantly, I then upload all these live streams. I keep them online so my students can watch them later because there's nothing better than Oh, how'd you sculpt this? And I can mention, oh, I use these techniques, blah, blah. There's nothing better than seeing me do it in real time. And then they can go back and ask me questions of, hey, what were you doing at one hour and 15 minutes, you know? Speaking of, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt, you should. I teach. So I have two Patreons. One of them has a 3D models and one of them is for teaching people how to 3D model. And I've heard it all. I've heard the, oh, I have I don't have an artistic bone in my body. Um, I don't know how to draw. It doesn't matter. You can learn, I promise. I'm actually not a very good um, 2D artist either. <laughs> that is something I've been working on. Uh, obviously not. It's not a priority. Oh, subdivision levels. I'm like, why isn't this working? So right now I'm adding more thickness to his eye eyes. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, it just reads a little bit better from a distance and it will paint better when it's 3D printed as well. They're really small, so I mean, it's it's mostly just going to fill with paint um, unless you print it larger. I'd recommend just using a wash. Maybe I should give him like tears. Would that be too morbid? How about just tears on one side of his face? He's just he's just crying in one spot. I 
I kind of like how pixelated it looks. It reminds me of um, Twilight Princess from Zelda because the entire world had those little like pixelated black things floating everywhere. It's immediately what it reminds me of. I never beat that game. Great game. But yeah. It's really cool that you teach. Thanks. I really enjoy it. Um, at first, I was just showing a couple of my friends how to do it, and uh, they were like, hey, you're actually able to explain this in a way that I understand. And I'm like, oh, really? And so I'm like, maybe other people would find it helpful too. Um, I'm completely self-taught. I actually went to school for mechanical engineering. I did get my degree. And then I... Now I'm an artist. I ask all dragons and creepy men for a living. No, I'm just kidding. But not really. <laughs> looks more like Scar. It does look more like a Scar. I feel like he's crying. Sad boy. <laughs> trying to open up his eyes a little bit. That's the best thing about this, is since he's a monster and kind of distorted, I can make his eyes really asymmetrical and kind of creepy, and uh, it works. I'm keeping this weird pixelated pattern on his face. I like it. All right, we are going to crease the sides of his nose. There we go. So now when I subdivide it, we have a nice little harsh line right there. Um, I definitely like what's happening with his nostrils. It's kind of weird. I also don't know if it's really, like, a big deal. I probably don't need to fix it. All right, I also creased his brow. Oops. And I'm also going to crease his eyelids that I just extruded. It's kind of a funky mask, I'm, I'm aware. But I like it. What happens if I just do the auto crease? What does it think? Zbrush, what do you think is significant here? Where is my crease button? On my own custom UI. I put it somewhere. There it is. <laughs> Alright. That's what Zbrush thinks is significant. I agree. Good job, Zbrush. He doesn't look sad enough. He looks kind of neutral. Let's just... Sad. <laughs> that doesn't look sad either. <laughs> he just does a goofy expression. <laughs> okay, that's bringing me way too much joy. Sad. His face looks so melty. Now he just looks confused. This is where eyebrows help a lot. Does not have any eyebrows. Okay, now he looks almost kind of lost, and that's fine. I like it. I don't know if I'm totally sold on those weird, like, dribbles I put on his cheek, but I'm not getting rid of them right now because I think they're neat. This has come a long way since we had not left. That was the beginning of the live stream. Which normally I'd play Speed Skull back for you guys, but I forgot like until halfway through, so you'll you'll just like jump to it looking like this pretty much. Which is okay. What turns a man neutral? Um probably just no expression. Kinda like what I'm doing right now with my face. <laughs> just not quite a relaxed face, but just like slightly raised eyebrows and then a straight mouth. Alright. Been live streaming for about an hour. Um, I think I'm gonna oh take my Patreon thing off there. Dude. I think I'm gonna take a break and come back. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, think about them. My the break will be like, I don't know, five-ish minutes. Oh, really quick though. Corey says, I've tried getting to sculpting multiple times, I just struggled to stick with it. That is the hardest part. I always joke that the hardest part of teaching people how to sculpt and learn ZBrush is getting them to open the program. Um, 
that is the hardest part and I'm not going to make light of it. What, what really helped me was, um, committing to very, very little. My goal every day was just to open ZBrush, open a sphere and sculpt a single line. That was it. That was my goal. If I did that, I was genuinely happy. And, uh, at least like 50% of the time I would actually sculpt a lot more than just a sphere, you know, or a single line on a sphere. And setting that habit really helped. Um, for a lot of my students, what really helps is just having me check in with them. Um, just some of them, like, they're so sweet. They, they, they feel bad, like, when they don't get stuff done on time. I'm like, I'm never mad. But sometimes just having a teacher that's checking in with you is an extra bit of motivation of, like, oh, I want to have something to show. That can help, too. But, yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Xander, I don't know what you're talking about. What makes turns man neutral? You're, you're being inquisitive what's the word Th philosophical and i am not awake enough for that <laughs> all right i'm gonna take a break i'll be back thank you guys for hanging out
Alright, I'm back. Even shorter break than anticipated, because I'm like, I'm not hungry, I don't want a snack, so we're back. Alright, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot more work. Um, probably just like another 10-15 minutes or so. My music is so loud, I cannot hear myself think. There we go. Um, I love these headphones, very cute. But uh, they, they auto turn up the volume on themselves. I don't know what I did to them. I don't remember dropping them, but yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Oh, Xander says a Futurama quote. Ah, I'm ashamed. I love that show. I, I didn't recognize the quote at all. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. What else do I want to work on? Oh, just for context for people that are lurking or watching this in the future, um, my name is Mia. I sculpt 3D printable models. That's pretty much the gist of it. But I forget to even say that sometimes. A lot of people see that's like, oh, like, what is this even for? You know, um, is it for a project? I mean, kind of. I'm sculpting Seven Deadly Sins right now, and that will go into a Kickstarter that will release later this month. Um, that's pretty much all of it. I really have to sneeze. <laughs> I'm not going to sneeze, apparently. It's just, now I'm just thinking about it. No biggie. All right. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do right now is play back the speed sculpt I have recorded so far. And then I can kind of like see if I'm inspired to keep working on this or if I'm just kind of leave it where it is for right now and then do the final pass of it tomorrow or later this week. God, I really have to sneeze, I swear. Anyway, it's not important. All right, I have this cute little screen for speed sculpts. Nope, that is goodbye. I have a stream deck. I can never remember which buttons do what. I haven't used it very much. It's funny, I program the buttons. I should know what's what. Aha, it's this one. Bam, there we go. All right. Sloth two. And there we go, tea skull time. So yeah, what's on the left is what we started with at the beginning of this live stream, and obviously what's all happening on the right is what's actively changing. It jumped around a little bit because uh, I forgot to press the button until a little into the stream, but you can mostly see what happened. There we go. And now I know what all my stream deck buttons do again, because I remembered on stream. <laughs> also a good time to actually save this file. I always do one save here. I do one save into my paranoid backup folder, and that is exactly what it's called. Sloth BU for backup. And then after the stream is over, I upload uh, one of those copies to Google Drive. And that is my little three-step formula to never losing any of my work ever. Highly recommend. I also have a hard drive that I back myself up to like every six months or so. But it's really unorganized, so it, it's almost doing more harm than good, honestly. It's okay. You are very welcome. It is fun to stream, and it is... It's so nice to see it in real time, just so you can see, like... How does this stuff actually even happen, you know? I learned so much, uh, like, teaching myself, but, like, how did I teach myself? And a large part of that, excuse me, was watching live streams of artists that I, I enjoy. Yeah, I'm not feeling especially, not, like, motivated, but, like, starstruck on, like, what to do next with this model. So I might just leave it where it is. I went on a break, came back, and I might just dip right away. <laughs> I'll put a fun render on this while we're kind of just hanging out still. And yeah, if anyone watching, you know, Corey especially, um, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt, even though you've tried it before, like, I would love to teach you. I'm a good teacher. I've had three people go full-time, and uh, I have a couple dozen students at any given time. And they all are busy and have lives that 
to make it really hard to fit in time, but if you make it into a habit, it will happen. The trick is not to be too harsh on yourself when you fall off of it. I've noticed that students who do better or do the best are the ones that aren't consistent and are aware of it, but they keep trying. Because if you're like, okay, I'm going to sculpt, I'm going to do it, you know, I'm be a professional artist in six months, and six months later they didn't even open the program, they get so discouraged they never try again. And uh, you can't do that. You gotta be nice to yourself, you know? Shit happens. It's okay. It's more important about trying again instead of being harsh with yourself to do it in the first place. Spooky boy. Freaking love it. All right, I'm gonna take a couple screenshots so I can save them into a folder. Ew, maybe that would be the alpha shot. It's so jarring that he has his neck completely facing straight. Awful. I love it. There we go. Ooh, and I'll also do one with a black background for maximum drama, yeah. And shift R for my render settings. There we go. Well, I actually live streamed two days in a row. Which is crazy. It's like a new record. Yeah. Maybe I'll live stream again tomorrow. I don't know. I wouldn't wouldn't quote me on it. Or don't trust me. <laughs> but I'll come back at some point. <laughs> I'm so inconsistent because of live streaming. I really do enjoy it. It's just like a... Kind of get in the habit of not doing it almost. I really enjoy it though. I love talking with you guys. Anyway. Enough rambling. Thank you guys for hanging out. If you have any questions, uh, I guess at this point email me. Because I will not be here. Or join the next live stream. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.